Ja, als je van beneden in het lokaal zit, dan uh, halen ze je wel even op uit. Uh, ja, ik zit boven. Vandaag. Ja, daar ben ik niet bij. Dus. Ja, ik, ja, ik heb hem aan. Ah, hij staat erop. En hij staat ook goed. Uh, ja hoor. Ja. Ja.
Of course, they can, uh, uh, the, the counterparty, uh, the, the Robert Amsterdam, can claim that uh, if the evidence was uh, taken in a, in a wrong way, uh, that the evidence could have been manipulated or changed or whatever. But currently, in, uh, in law and in court, uh, the methods that we use here uh, so far hold up. Uh, they are not perfect, but it's all we have. And uh, if you find, uh, that's exactly what uh, Jaap said, if you find with these tools that we have now, if you acquire uh, child pornography or whatever from a running system, from a running memory, in whatever way, uh, it's evidence in that a high ch uh, chance of being uh, convicted, yeah. as it can shoot. But it's very hard to, uh, to, to counter that. Of course, but you can try. Uh, and, uh, so that's a, that's a very good thing. I think that's a very good thing. But of course, we as a as experts in the field of forensics, yeah. you uh, should always try to go for the, the, for the best way, for the most perfect way. And uh, so we, we, have to, we have to try to do our best and uh, uh, temper as little as possible with the evidence and uh, try to follow the forensic uh, principles uh, as good as we can. Usual level applications. Impact can be uh, significant, uh, according to a study by uh, Sutherland, uh, or proof, but we can even reason that. Now we, don't even, we don't need a study for that, we can just reason. But the impact, because you run your software on a running system, so you're, you, you change the state of the, of the system, you change the memory, you're interacting with other uh, processes, you're interacting with the operating system, you could trigger all sorts of trap doors. Uh, a lot of malware, a lot of software that is trying to hide has all sorts of trap doors or triggers. And as soon as you step on the wrong, a wrong API, they go, oh, delete, kill, wipe, uh, go. Uh, so they, they are triggered to, uh, to hide. And, uh, um, you get a fuzzy snapshot, what we talked about, that memory changes over time. And you cannot capture <coughs> the memory all in once. I mean, that's basically not possible. So you read it word by word. But that takes a while. We saw that it took, what, eight minutes to take the, uh, the two gigabyte RAM of the Mac over FireWire. In those eight minutes, the memory changes. Things happen. And the first byte was taken eight minutes ago, uh, or eight minutes before you take the last byte. So the information you get that you put together is what they call fuzzy. It's, it's, it doesn't belong. There's things that don't add up. Uh, a study of Lipsner, they proved it. And of course, uh, these, uh, the studies of these people, they, uh, they messed around with uh, rootkits. And I think we all know what a rootkit is, but uh, no, I don't have an example of that. But the rootkit is, uh, is a hook typically uh, very low in the operating system on the API to, uh, uh, to, to trick us. Okay? So we think that something happens, but in fact we are being tricked. I, I do have a, a slide about it, uh, how, how this works. Of course, there's, all, there's also uh, kernel level applications, uh, memory data, uh, Windows memory toolkit, <coughs> memorize, uh, WinM for an end case, access data, GMC, systems, KMTDD, AV, Gary, there are plenty more. I mean, there's, there's a lot of tools that you can use. Uh, these run in, uh, in kernel level. Uh, but here we see that if we use these tools, we, uh, we tamper with the evidence. Uh, this was a, a Windows XP system with uh, 265 uh, uh, Mac of uh, RAM or half a game of RAM, and we saw that if we don't uh, mess with the system, this is how the RAM changed, but if we start a DD acquisition here, look at the mismatch that we get. Uh, so we, we, our copy is only for 75% correct, or 75% for, for, uh, for the quantity capture. And with uh, the Windows Memory Toolkit, it's even less, 65% of the, 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 
starting point. Uh, I have a video about uh, uh, getting into a running system. If you uh, uh, make a spot, I don't know if you know the tool, but it's a fantastic tool to uh, get into a system. I know that this one has sound, so uh, let me uh, turn the sound on. Uh, and this is if, uh, if you have a running system and you want to, uh, you want to break in, you want to get access to the system, you can use tools like this to, uh, 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 to get low level access because what you want is you want to get as low as you can into the operating system. Because the lower you get, the, the less problems you have with root kits and uh, the, the more you can capture. Because you have the more rights you have, huh? Let's see if you get the sound. Yeah, sound. Because you see. Okay, I'm running a VM of uh, Track 5, and we're going to start learning how to use Metasploit and just some Metasploit basics. And we're going to try to run an exploit on a vulnerable system. And I've got a remote desktop. Backtrack is a Linux to distribution a with Windows all XP machine. Of, uh, and I'm going to run this uh, Icecast 2.0.1 to 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 server. This is a music server. And it starts a, server. a standard this is, um, Windows computer. This server, this Icecast server, has some software vulnerability. That has vulnerability. So we'll just start it up right here. And then we'll see if we can exploit this system with Backtrack using Metasploit. So we'll go back to backtrack and the first thing I do is make sure that I have internet connectivity so I'm gonna ping Yahoo okay and I can successfully ping Yahoo and then I'm gonna try to see if I can ping the uh, computer that I'm gonna exploit. There was a paper okay, by so shots so I need to be able to ping the computer that I'm gonna exploit so I can so that's perfect. Okay so I can close this terminal. Actually, I'm going to need to open up another terminal. And I'm going to run um, Metasploit right here from the terminal by typing in MSF console. This is a standard tool that comes with the backtrack. Uh, yeah, like that. It takes a second for it to open up. Open this the advantage up. is that this is all open source software. So from a forensic uh, perspective, uh, you can, you can all right. exactly what's happening. Here's the happens. Metasploit framework, the console. It tells you the version right here. It tells you how many exploits are loaded into it. It's got 684 exploits. exploits. Are possible it's got 270 different payloads. And payloads so are uh, abuses. I'm going to search for the exploit that do works with Icecast. So I'll just search for Icecast. He searches for the software package, but you can use a, a tool like Nessus. Okay, and there it is. See if you can HTTP find a vulnerability so on the system that use you're targeting. But it's a because the system could see HTTP that you are attacking it. Uh, ice cast. But if you are experienced, you might know type some there. standard exploits. And now you can see that it's been loaded into the MSF console. To see if right. And so now all I need to do is say show. Payloads. So we said uh, I'm going to use the uh, uh, ice that will work uh, with this attack. exploit. And, and I'm going to scroll cast, through uh, that and look for it. I'm going to need a Windows. First of all, I'm not even going to need I'm going to need a Windows uh, payload. Of attacks, and I'm going to try to go for a popular cast, one, a very powerful uh, one, exploit. the Windows Meterpreter. So I'm going to see if I can this run a Meterpreter on the target system. this vulnerable client. So, so I'll look for that Windows exploit allows you say bind to TCP. get a prompt on the running okay. system. So over the network here, but it could be a. Uh, I'll a say local set network. payload Windows MET tab. No, no tab. All right, interpreter bind underscore. TCP. All right, and I'll hit enter, and you can see that it's been loaded in. So we've got a payload. So we're going to try to exploit the system, and then once we've exploited it, we're going to try to run a payload, which in this case will be a interpreter. Right, and let's see here, we're going to need to set the options. So we'll say show options, and it tells you all the options that you need. Looks like we need to set the, the IP address of the, the remote host that we are IP address. 
we're going to also need one for the payload options. So let's just set that. So set R host and then the IP address that we're targeting. Of course, you are offering evidence with this, huh? But okay. If you need to get in. Uh, now, if I do show options again, you'll see that the remote host has been loaded in. So that's perfect. So now that that's done, all we have to do is type exploit and hit enter. And it'll run the exploit against the machine. You can okay. see it's starting now you have a and the interpreter oh, session one has been opened. <coughs> so I've got a interpreter prompt. Then it starts a new works, process on the other machine. I'm running interpreter you are running inside the, the process that you are attacked. And Which, if uh, you want you to know, all I have to do here is type shell. The ice cast. And it should drop me into the shell, you right? Start a shell. Program files, icecast, win32. So I'm actually running this exploit through the process, through the icecast2 server process right there. I can do a, a dir command and look at the directory of the Windows XP machine. Of course, you should be right? very careful. See, icecast, there, are running running. So there the it is, there's a C drive. I'm running Linux, little, and right here I'm looking uh, at the Windows C drive. If possible. All right. So I can search around, look through all the files on the, the vulnerable machine. We've now victimized the machine, and we have He's got to do uh, one more step. administrative access to the command prompt. I'm going to exit out of this command prompt, though, and it's going to drop me back into a interpreter shell. And once I'm in a interpreter shell, I can type help to see all of the interpreter commands that I can use and run against so this is all the this fix. victim machine, right? Yeah, it's the so it's going to do a list, a ton of commands that I can run. Exploit. And right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the processes running on this victim machine. So I'm going to say a PS and run a PS to see the processes running. And I can see all the processes running on that XP Interesting thing victim that machine. We would like to have the over. process. You can see here that with, uh, one of the processes that is system running is if you have system rights, you're part of LSAS, the overhead system. Right. And LSAS is the system, local security authentication subsystem service, right? All the data the PID, the process ID is seven hundred. So if I could get into this process and migrate from this IceCast server that's where we're that has a we basically uh, co-opted migrate into this LSAS.exe process, I'll have complete access to the system. I'll have access to everything. So all I'm going to do to migrate into that process is type migrate. And then the process ID, which was 700, and hit enter. And now the interpreter and our bind has migrated over. And so and now, now we are part inside of the of so now LSAS, we can do anything the which is the security system. subsystems with Windows. So we are basically higher than a deeper than an administrator. Right? That's exactly so that's excellent. <laughs> so, uh, this is a okay, now that we've migrated to a different process, the LSAS.exe process, <coughs> what I can do is I can run a hash dump. Yeah, okay, now he's going to hack. Again. Uh, he's going to hack some hash words or whatever. Uh, oh. Uh, but what I want to show is that it is uh, uh, it, it could be easy, to, even if the system looks closed, uh, protected with a password, to uh, break into and get very low level uh, access to the system. Uh, and the lower you get, like I said, the more power you have over the system. You can read all the data structures of the operating system. You can access all the RAM. You have much more control over uh, the, the uh, It is by far one of the most preferable ways to uh, get access to, uh, not that to handy, but uh, I, I call it in a minute. Uh, it is by far the most preferable way to get the RAM through the, the, the CPU, uh, through the running operating system. Because if you do it this way, you don't have problems with the cache. You don't have problems with um, uh, the, 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 or less problems with the time and the volatility and the, uh, the fuzziness of RAM. Uh, 
so uh, the harder ways to hack it are probably more possible. Although if the firewire uh, way works, that's a nice technique, of course. <coughs> Yeah, it's about uh, rootkits and uh, the system user. Rootkits, on what user will have to do they operate? Also at the same level, at the system. Level. system. So if you are uh, running a, a, uh, on, on the same level, would you be able to see this rootkit and maybe exit it or alter it? Yes, but if you have to, uh, uh, you, uh, you should be able to figure it out by uh, by very uh, closely examining uh, data structures and uh, uh, because rootkits can be, I mean, it's a level playing field. You are at the same level as the rootkit. So you can do the same things the rootkit can do. So now it's a cat and mouse hunt. Uh, but at least you have a fair, a, a fair chance. If you are at a higher level, you're never going to find it. So at least you are at the, at, at the opportunity to find it. Yes. But of course, be careful. Uh, you don't want to alter the target system more than you absolutely have to. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, uh, you want to get it as clean as possible. But sometimes you have to use a hammer to get in. And, uh, well, and like uh, Jaap said, uh, at the moment, uh, as long as you find something, people don't really ask two difficult questions on how you found it. <coughs> I think in 80% of the forensics cases, these kind of techniques are used. They used to retrieve a password to decrypt the hard disk. And if you have that password and it's correct, then there's not that much discussion if your method was valid. Exactly. There should be, but there isn't. <laughs>
ASOS, uh, Wing 32 DB, KMT, T DB, uh, the F is from, uh, from uh, F Secure. They have a nice tool for a remote dock. You have only a tiny file that you load from a USB or a CD or whatever. Uh, that's another point that you, you don't want. Uh, well, you don't want to tamper with the evidence. You want to tamper at least the least possible. Uh, you want to add, yeah, tamper with the least possible way. So uh, yeah, you only install a tiny uh, agent on the target system, and then you can do a re uh, remote uh, top over the network. Firewire. There are good Python, Python tools. Python is the language of uh, the weapon of choice, so to speak. Uh, the language used in this area. Uh, cold boot, maybe, if you manage to do it. Well, it doesn't know other options. Well, analyzing the data. There are so many options to analyze the data. Uh, you can search, grab, uh, with wing hacks or whatever editors. Uh, be careful that there is Unicode uh, and uh, ASCII code. Uh, fragmentation of the data. Uh, data can if you have a dump of the data, that could be extremely fragmented, you don't know. Uh, you could analyze process memory, information retrieval, data mining techniques uh, to uh, figure out, uh, uh, to see if you can find something, memory traces. Uh, maybe you can find a list of the running processes, uh, but are they atomic? Because they are running, not going to change. Uh, Rootkits can hide themselves. So Made, made it difficult. Registry, in the case of Windows, uh, registry is good to uh, get open files. Well, there's so many things you can uh, uh, figure out. Uh, yeah, I have to, well, it's outside. Of course, they uh, try to, uh, some data uh, might, uh, they, they might try to obfus obfuscate uh, data, and so on, on files. So that you cannot read. Uh, the, the funny thing is, this is actually a game. It works. This is C code, obfuscated C code. They uh, are one. Uh, there's a there's a competition eh, every year about the most obfuscated uh, C code, and this this one in a long time ago. But in uh, in in, um, in X uh, in X on Linux, this uh, runs a little. Uh, uh, space Invaders uh, game. And it works. I mean, you can uh, compile it with C and you get a Space Invader game in Windows, in X. <coughs> but it's not easy to read. I want to have a quick look. Oh, wrong. Uh, wrong. I want to have a quick look at uh, Sluxnet. Uh, because it's interesting because they, uh, they use a rootkit and they use all sorts of uh, tricks to uh, hide from the system. So we can learn a lot from that. If uh, they want to use techniques to hide, then uh, um, that was a very advanced uh, piece of software that attacked the uh, PLC computers uh, of, uh, of the Natal's uh, centrifuges uh, in, uh, in Iran. It was a popular attack. It targeted uh, Siemens PLCs. The payload was a PLC uh, rootkit, and uh, the first target was Windows, second target was the IDE for the field engineer, and the third target was the PLC, you see that in the, in the picture. So the first target uh, was Windows. You see all sorts of exploits that they uh, used, which is interesting, because you see how easy Microsoft makes it for us to get access, even if we don't have a password. Um, it, it's self-replicated now over uh, USB drives, it's self-replicated over uh, an exploit in the, in the print spooler, it's self-replicated over uh, some by shares, yeah? so, uh, the shares. Um, it had a Windows rootkit, very interesting, it had a side driver, because Microsoft, if it doesn't have a side driver, it's just a cool software, it's a, uh, I don't know it, uh, are you sure that you want to install it? But if it is signed, then it will edit. And why a driver? Because a driver, by definition, has a, a system uh, credentials. Right? That's uh, the lowest, so it's easy for a rootkit. It 
the root that needs those credentials. The second target was uh, the ID of the, of the field engineer. This is what they use to program the software that they put in the, in the factory. And this was the second target. And uh, the last target was the actual PLC, the actual computer in the factory. In fact, it was this one. <laughs> 